Hello, in today's training video we're going to show the slide piston replacement on the handbell compressor. We're going to start by removing the discharge check valve and stop valve and we're going to loosen these bolts. After you have the four bolts loosened up, go ahead and remove the stop valve. top of the check valve, between the stop valve and the check valve, there's a gasket you'll need to remove the old material. And then remove uh, the remaining gasket material off the discharge port. You can do this using a, a pick. Using a breaker bar, we're going to loosen all the bolts on the oil separator flange. In order to access the bolts that are on the top near the discharge port on the compressor, you might need to cut an Allen wrench to fit in here. And that way, you can loosen the bolts. We're going to remove two bolts on each side of the oil separator, and then we're going to replace them with a longer guide bolt that we're going to use for removing the oil separator. When we get them in place, we're going to go ahead and loosen and remove the remaining bolts. Using the two long guide bolts on each side, we're going to remove the oil separator. If you have a hard time getting the oil separator to break free from the compressor casing, you could use a bolt on each side here and jack the oil separator back from the casing. Loosen all bolts on the discharge cover plate and remove. Remove the discharge cover plate. Take out the disc springs. The discharge cover removed. We're going to check the slide piston and valve motion by pressing in on it with a hex wrench. And release. It should come back at least 75% of the travel, but in some cases due to a worn out slide piston, it'll spring all the way back out towards you. The important part for this step when we're checking the motion is to see if you could push in on the piston. If you can't or not able to, something might have caused the slide valve to become jammed. Now we're going to pull out the piston, modulation spring, and copper washer. To do this we're going to take our hex wrench and loosen the bolt. I'm also going to place my hand over the piston to keep it from springing out. Once we get the bolt out, we can use the spring to help us remove the piston. And now we just want to ensure the slide valve moves. So we'll grab hold of the piston here, push back and forth, make sure it moves freely. Next we're going to want to clean out any copper buildup that's in the cylinder. So let's push back on the piston rod. Then using a scotch brite pad, you're going to want to scour out and clean any copper buildup until the cylinder wall is smooth. Because you want to be very careful that you don't hone them down too much because of the tight tolerances uh, between the cylinder wall and the piston rings. Using a clean rag, we're going to wipe out the cylinder walls after we're done with the scotch brite, remove any loose debris. I'm going to take the bolt wipe off any oil or Loctite 
residue that might still be on it from when we removed it. We're also going to take the piston and wipe off any oil on the back side. And we're also going to wipe down the copper washer. Get it real clean. All right, now we're going to apply a thin bead of Loctite on the copper washer and stick it onto the piston. Put it on the piston there, we'll put another thin bead on the other side of the copper washer. Good. All right, put the Loctite down for a moment. We're going to apply some oil to the cylinder walls to make pressing in the piston a little bit easier. Some of our, pressure, our piston ring compression tool, we're going to apply some oil to that as well. Insert the piston into the guide ring. Like so. Then we're going to insert the modulation spring. Using the guide ring, we're going to line the piston up to the cylinder walls. We're going to press in evenly, like so. We're going to apply some Loctite 554 to the bolt threads. Reinsert the bolt. We're going to make sure we tor torque this bolt down to 75 foot pounds. Install the disc springs before we put the discharge cover plate back on. I'm going to use a new gasket here for the discharge cover plate. Make sure you line up the channel here so that it matches. I'm going to use the center one to get it started. After we get all the bolts on the discharge cover plate hand tight, we're going to go around with our torque wrench and tighten them to the proper torque. We're going to go around and make sure each bolt is tightened to the proper torque setting. Put new Teflon gasket in the discharge port. Sure that oil separator flange is free of any gasket material and you can clean it off with a scraper lightly scrape it to remove the material be careful not to scratch the flange be sure the compressor casing is free of any uh, gasket material that may be left over from the old one and you could just clean it off with a scraper lightly scraping it to make sure you don't scratch the casing we're going to put two bolts on the oil separator flange here that are a little bit longer on each side we're going to use that to line up our gasket. And if you notice on the gasket, they have three holes together on each side across from each other. You could use that as a reference. 
using the long bolts on each side of the oil separator, we're going to use it to line up the flange with the compressor casing. We're going to insert a bolt on each side of the casing and tighten it down. Once we have it tightened down, we're going to remove it and check the Teflon gasket to make sure it's being compressed. We're going to remove the bolts now and check our Teflon gasket. Check Teflon gasket to make sure it is indented by the discharge tube. As you can see there we have a nice indentation. We're going to replace all the bolts in the oil separator flange. When we get them all snug down around, all around, we're going to remove the two longer guide bolts and replace with the normal size bolt. We're going to tighten each bolt to the proper torque specification. We're going to go around the flange and hit each bolt along the way. Install a new gasket on the discharge port. Place the check valve on the discharge port. Insert the new gasket between the check valve and the stop valve. And we're going to line up the bolts here. Screw down the stop valve. Once we have all the bolts hand tight, we're going to go ahead and torque them down to the proper spec.